Okay, so about to record. I just wanted to start recording before I continue. Okay, it is recording. Um, so today we're going to concentrate on activities and uh, I will just do a recap of what we discussed on Wednesday. I will run through because we, we need to remember all those concepts and what we discussed in terms of the data visualization for uh, study unit two in order for you to be able to answer the questions. Um, and remember today also, if you have a question from your assignment and you need clarity on that, feel free to ask. Um, and, and don't forget, as I go along and things don't make sense or you get lost and you want clarity on some things, um, you can raise your hand if I will be able to see it. If I don't see it and you've been raising it for long, just unmute yourself and call out my name and then I will stop and then you can ask your question. Okay, so let us uh, continue and let's uh, please also remember always when you join the meeting to always mute yourself uh, because it creates echo and sometimes it disturbs other people can hear okay so what we discussed on wednesday we went and we looked at what is statistics we looked at the concept of statistics we looked at the types of variables and then the different levels of variables um, we also spoke about what statistics is. We said statistics is about transformation of data into meaningful, useful information where you can use it to make decisions. And <clears throat> I'm not gonna go into why we study statistics. We know we study statistics to, <coughs> to solve um, problems. And, <clears throat> and we also know that a lot of um, uh businesses or government are using statistics to make those decisions we 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 also looked at some of the examples that we uh that statistics are used in in this day and age uh in terms of the coronavirus in terms of the election and the weather we also spoke about two branches of statistics. We said there is a descriptive statistic and also there is a inferential statistics. And we describe what descriptive statistics is all about. It's about describing the data in terms of tables, charts, um, and summarization of that information. We also spoke about what inferential statistics is all about. And we said inferential statistics is where we infer the information we collected from the sample to the population that we are interested in and we said with inferential statistics we do estimation and also we can do hypothesis testing then we explain some of the concepts that we use in statistics like the population and we said the population is all elements of study that you are interested in and if you calculate the mean, the standard deviation, and uh, the mode, the median, and so forth, those measures that you calculate from the population data, we call them parameters. We also said because the population is way too big, sometimes you can't reach everyone in the population, therefore we have to sample or we have to create a sample by using some of the sample, sampling methods. Um, and we said a sample is just a subset of your population group. And we said once you have selected your sample and you calculate things like your mean, your median, your standard deviation, your variance, and those measures, we call them statistics. I'm not going to go into the exercise, but then we continue. We said um, when we talk about the population or the sample, it's representing um, individuals or items, and those items have characteristics that defines those items. For example, we said a we dif we discussed what a variable is because a variable is a characteristic that describes the population of your interest or your sample. 
Um, and we said also the population can be something that can be observed or it can be measured. And we said if it's observed, it means you can see. And if it's measured, you need to take something and measure it. And then we also spoke about um, the measures that we, we get from those variables, because then the measures are the, oh, sorry, the, 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 the data is the values that are associated with that variable. So for example, we used gender as an example, and we said in gender, uh, we have male and female um, as values, and those values, we call them data. Um, <clears throat> also looked at the types of variables and we said there are two types of variables. There is the qualitative variable, which is also called the, there is a qualitative, which is also called the categorical variable, and there is the numerical variable, which is also called the quantitative. And we said for categorical variable, which are qualitative, are variables that you can put into categories, you can group them. And numerical data is data that you can either count or you can measure. And we gave examples of those kind of data. Then we also defined the levels of measurement or the scales of measurement. And we said in terms of the levels of measurement, because they classify the types of variables that you have in terms of uh, in terms of the four scales um, and we said uh, all categorical data set um, variables all categorical variables have the lowest level and all numerical variables have the highest level because you do lots of you can do a lot of other manipulation of those information so we said nominal is the lowest and ratio is the highest level um, of measurement. Then we describe what each level of measurement is and we said nominal is for categorical data and there is no order, there is no logical order or natural order and you cannot use it for any comparison. And then we also looked at um, ordinal data uh, which is also a categorical data and with Ordinal data, there is a natural or logical order. And <clears throat> we also defined what an interval is. We said interval comes from a quantitative data or numerical data. And we said you are able to see the difference between the measures because it's a numerical value, but it does not have a true point, a true zero point because zero is another number which refers to another level. Um, and we gave an example here of temperature because zero is in like in temperature, zero is a cold temperature because there is a minus, um, uh, a, a negative temperature that that temperature can reach. So any variable, numerical variable that can take a negative number, then it will be an interval variable. Then we also describe what a ratio is and we said a ratio is also from the quantitative variables. You are also be able to check the difference between the two values and it has a true meaning of zero because zero means nothing or zero means it does not exist. That thing does not exist. And we then also describe some types of um, order of operations that you can do on those levels of measurement. So we said also for nominal data, you can do count and you can do mode. For ordinal data, you can do uh, count, you can do mode, you can do mean, uh, not mean, but the median. You can find the median because the median of the ordinal data will be the value in the middle because it's in the ranking order. So you, the one that is in the middle will be your 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 modal, uh, uh, your modal, sorry, your median uh, point because it's that one in the middle. Then for interval, you can do everything except calculating the ratio because interval has a negative. We cannot calculate the um, 
a ratio of a negative number and because and also it does not have an absolute zero so uh, that's interval and the ratio everything else applies so you need to know this um, when you do your assignments as well then we moved on and we looked at how we summarize data um, in terms, uh, especially the numerical data and the quantitative data in terms of tables and chart. And we said for categorical data, we use the three, including also the Pareto. Uh, we use a frequency table, which is just a table. We use the, the graphs, a bar chart, pie chart, and a Pareto diagram to visualize categorical data. And we describe how a frequency table looks like. And we said a frequency table. Uh, I, I must say, I must repeat this as well. A frequency table is your frequency is your count. How many number of values fall within those categorical values? And the relative frequency is your frequency divided by the total. So for example, here yeah, they didn't give you a total. You just have to calculate the, the total, but sometimes they do tell you that this is out of 100, and then you know that your total, which is your sample size, is equals to 100. And to calculate your relative frequency, you're going to use your, your frequency divided by the total, which is your N, which is your sample size. Um, to calculate the relative frequency. When you add all the values under the relative frequency, when you calculate this, the total of the relative frequency, the answer should give you one. Because relative frequency it is in decimal form, so the answer should give you one. If we calculate a percentage frequency, then because we take the relative frequency, we multiply that by 100, the answer will be in a percentage form. The total of the percentage frequency will be equals to 100. And that's how you complete the frequency table. And from a frequency table, you can um, summarize it and be able to, to speak about the things that you see in the frequency table. To say there are 44 people who frequently goes to Afri uh, to Capitec Bank. Or there is 0 0.22 people who goes to Capitec Bank. Or there is 22% or 22% of the people goes to Capitec Bank or frequently goes to Capitec, Capitec Bank. And that's how you, you interpret the values that you see on the frequency table. Okay. We also looked at the bar chart and we said a bar chart, the bars represent the category, the height will represent the frequency or the percentage. And we also looked at, oh, and also with the bar chart, the bars, there is space between the bars. The bars are separated by spaces or there are gaps between the bars. And then we spoke about a pie chart we said a pie chart the slices of a pie represent the category and the size represents the frequency or the percentage of that pie of those categories then the pareto chart we said it is your bar chart and your cumulative uh, polygon or frequencies or percentages with it. So it is your normal bar chart. And if we add the percentages uh, of every cumulate, um, every bar chart, then we can create a cumulative um, percentage graph on top of it and as a line chart. And this makes it a Pareto diagram. Then we also looked at the frequency distribution or, or how we summarize data based on or how we summarize quality quantitative data so here because it's numeric data we said we need to order the data from lowest to highest in terms of the ordered array and once we have the ordered array we can also do a stem and leaf plot from that data 
but we can also order the data and create what we call a frequency distribution because also when you build a frequency distribution table, it's a table you need to sort your data from lowest to, to highest. And with that frequency distribution table, it create you can create after you have created that you can um, summarize the data in terms of visualizing it in um, as a graph, as a histogram, a polygon, and OGIF. And we ended up doing uh, only the frequency, or we did the stem and leaf and the frequency distribution table. And today we will continue from where we left off. So just to summarize what we did also in terms of this, we said an ordered array means ordering the data in terms of from lowest to highest value. And we, and, and we also added things to say, um, when you order your data, you are able to see um, outliers and we define what an outlier is. And we said an outlier is a value that is way outside of the normal range, which is bigger than the rest of the other values or smaller than the rest of the other values, which is far apart from the other values. It's an unusual observation that you will notice. Then we said from the ordered array, you can create a stem and leaf plot. And I also did um, show you some examples of different types of stem and leaf plot. And we also um, discussed that the, uh, there is always one stem with many leaves. And we said when you read the stem and leaf plot, the value, for example, this is not six, but it is 16. 17, 17, 18, 18, 18. And we repeat all the values <clears throat> from the table. Um, and I said also later on when we do measures of um, measures of central tendency and measures of variation, we will use examples where you get a stem and leaf plot because in your exam or assignment, they might give you a stem and leaf plot and ask you to calculate the mean, the median, the mode. They might also ask you to calculate what is the smallest value, what is your highest value, what is your uh, fifth largest value, and so forth. So you need to know how to do that from your stem and leaf plot. But we will look at those examples later on. Um, and then we did this example just to show you how to um, take a stem and leaf plot and create a normal data like the one that is shown on the table as well. Then we also looked at the frequency distribution table and we looked at how do we create this frequency distribution table. So we said create a frequency distribution table. We need to sort the data from lowest to highest. We need to calculate the range, which tells us the distribution of your data. And you need to select how many classes you want to create, but also remember in your module, they will not expect you to calculate or, or create a, a distribution table. You just need to know the concept and the logic of how we built the frequency distribution table. Um, I'm almost getting to the end. And then, uh, after you have selected the number of classes, then you can um, use your number of classes, divide um, the range with that number of class, and you will be able to know what is the class width, which tells you how big your, your class, your category that you're going to create from this numerical data, how big should they be. And here we, see, we, we created the class interval or the width to be 10, Therefore, it means the distance from the smallest to the highest or the upper to the uh, the lower to the upper limit of that class interval. Um, it, the difference will be equals to 10, which is the range of that. So. Uh, <clears throat> and then we define the range. So going back, you go to your data, you look at your life number and you can select um, another digit that we want to start from. So here we started with 10. So we said anything from 10, but not to 20. Anything from 20, but not to 30. So, um, and then you define all your five classes, which are now your categories that you're going to use to create your table. 
And then once you have defined your classes, then you can assign the observations that falls within those classes. And you said you assign them by counting how many they are, which will be your frequency by saying how many of those ones that falls between 10, but not um, uh, 10, but not more than 20. And then you start counting. There are one, two, three, and then you say your frequency is three and you do for the rest of them. And then you add all of them. They should give you 20 because we know that we using a sample of 20 days. So the total of the frequency should be the same as the total that they have given you as a sample. To calculate the percentage um, frequency, we say uh, the frequency divided by 20, it will give us, so 3 divided by 20 gives us 15, 6 divided by 20 gives us 30, and when we add all the frequency, um, uh, the percentage frequencies should give us 100 because it's 100%. If they would have asked you to calculate the relative frequency, remember that relative frequency is uh, your frequency divided by 20 without multiplying it by 100, it will be a decimal. To calculate a cumulative frequency, with the first class interval, we take the frequency of the first interval and to go to the second interval, we take the frequency of the first, add the frequency of the second to give us the cumulative frequency. Because with this value of nine, we say we want to know all the days that had, um, all the winter days that had temperature of less than 30, regardless of whether they were in the first class or in the second class. So any, temp any day that had a temperature of less than 30. So there were nine of them because there are three that had 10 to 20 and there are six that had 20 to 30. So there are nine and you go on and complete the whole. So for example, when you get to 14, it will be um, nine plus five gives us 14. And the cumulative percent, oh sorry, the cumulative frequency when you get to the last class interval, the value of the last class interval should be equivalent or should be equal to your total frequency count. And then the cumulative frequency percentage, um, it's uh, your cumulative frequency divided by your total frequency, sorry. So it will be three divided by 20, we give us 15. 9 divided by 20 will give us 45. 14 divided by 20 will give us 70. And the last one will give you 100% because it's 20 divided by 20, which is 100%. And you can interpret the values that you see. And you will see when we do a lot of other exercises, we will be completing some of the tables so that you, you get used to how we complete the table and how we answer the questions. Okay, <clears throat> so. Once we have, now we move on from where we left off. Once we, once we have created a, um, a frequency distribution table, then we can create what we call a histogram, which is just a bar chart that takes the frequency distribution and put it into bars. So a frequency, a histogram, because we use the class intervals, so your bars of your your histogram will be represented by your will be represented by your class intervals. So the bars are represented by the class intervals. And the height will be represented. The height can be represented by either the frequency, the relative frequency or the percentage of a histogram. So 10, but not less than 20. So that is 10 because this is the midpoint 5. So this one will be 10. This one will be 20. This one will be 30, 40, 50. And with the histogram, you will notice that there are no gaps because when one interval starts and end, the other one starts and it will end. And where the other one starts, it means the previous one ended at that and the new one starts. 
So there are no gaps on a histogram. And on the horizontal, we can show the midpoints or we can show the exact class intervals. You don't have to show the only the midpoint, but you can show the exact interval. So it will be 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60s, and like that. Okay, and then the height, I've already explained that it can be the oh, the height will represent either the frequency, the relative frequency, or the percentage. With the frequency distribution, later on, uh, I'm just going to mention it here, but this you must put it at the back of your mind. We're going to discuss this in more details when we do the measures of um, variation. So with a histogram, you are able to show the shape or tell the shape of that histogram, whether the, the data is normally distributed or what we call it, it's symmetrical. Therefore, it means the mean, the median, and the mode of this data set are the same. We will discuss this in more detail. Don't worry about it. But for now, you just need to know that for a, a histogram that looks like this, the shape looks like this, we call it uh, where it's balanced. We call it a symmetrical or normal distributed um, histogram. A one, a symmetrical histogram that looks like this, it's what we call a uniform distribution because everything is the same. There is uniformity in terms of the bars. Uh, the third one, yeah, you can see that the tail goes to the right. So therefore, this we call it, the data of this histogram is skewed to the right. Therefore, the tail is to the right, the, it's skewed to the right, or we call it, it's right skewed. This one, the tail skews to the left, we say it is left skewed. And there's uh, other types of the histogram. But we will discuss this in more detail. You don't have to worry too much about it as yet. Okay, we're not gonna do this exercise because we're going to do a lot of other exercises later on. Don't worry about that. Um, then, from the frequency distribution table, remember that you can create a midpoint, which is your median value of those two, um, the up lower boundary and the upper boundary, by taking the middle value of this. So you can say 10 plus 20 is 30 divided by 2. It will give you the midpoint. You need to create what we call the midpoint. So between 20 and 30, the midpoint is, 30, is 25. 30 and 40, the midpoint is 35, and so forth. We know the frequency for each class. So when we create a polygon, we use the class midpoint and the frequency. So on your horizontal, we put your midpoints and your vertical, we put the frequencies. So we say 15. So the first one, the midpoint is 15. So at the beginning, it's zero because there is nothing. So it will start there at zero. Uh, this line is zero and 15 and three. So we go ahead and create that. So th this is what we call a frequency polygon. So we use the class midpoint and the frequency to create it. To create an OGIF, which is a cumulative percentage polygon, we use the lower class boundaries. Remember the first one, which was the polygon? We use the midpoint. For a cumulative polygon, or what we call an OGIF, we use lower class boundaries. So we're going to use only the first intervals, uh, class interval value, your lower class boundaries, which is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. We use that and we also take uh, the lower percentage of your cumulative frequencies. So remember at this point, 
it would have been 15, but we need to take it lower than. So we need to bring it down. So we're going to start there and say it will be zero, and then we move everything to the next class boundary. So, and that's how you create a cumulative percentage polygon. And this is useful to when you compare at least two or more groups because then you will have two lines. Let's say we need to compare the ages of students who do um, night school or who attend at night and those who attend at day school. And we want to compare. You can use the OGIF to do that because then it will show you um, the distribution of those two um, groups. A scatter plot graph is a graph that shows a relationship between two numerical values. So with the scatter plot, you need to have one numerical value that you want to compare to another numerical value. And we're going to use this when we do the last study, uh, study unit 11, when we do regression line, uh, regression analysis. That's where we use the scatter plot to check the relationship between X and Y. So with a scatter plot for numerical data, we compare two independent variables together. So, and then you just plot them. So this one is 23 and 125. So let's say 23 is here and 125 is there. That will be the block. 26 and 140, we can assume that 26 is here and 140 is somewhere there. That is the block. And you plot all of them. And that will show you the data as a scatter plot. And later on, we can describe what that data tells us. Later when we do, regression. For now, you just need to know that a scatter plot is another graph that displays numerical data and it it's used to compare two numerical data sets. Okay, and that concludes what we were supposed to do last week. If you have any question, I haven't been checking on the if there are any hands. There are no hands. Um, any questions? Remember, if you are able to type in the chat, you can type in the chat. And if you have any questions, feel free to stop me and ask. If there are no questions, then we can go to today's class because then I am going to be quiet and let you speak because I have been speaking a lot. Okay, so let's go to today's session. I need to share my entire screen for this purpose um, because I want to. OK, so please, um, I need to know how many people are able to. Are able to type in the chat as well, so please try and 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 put as many comments there in the chat so that I can see how many people are able to, to comment. And when we do the exercise, when we do the exercise, uh, Sfiso? Oh, sorry, 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 ma'am. Oh. Okay, so when we do the exercise, if you are able to like the answer, let's say, for example, um, uh, Hendrik, I'm going to use Hendrik because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pronounce that Hermias. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So let's say this is the answer to the question. You are able to just like that answer. And then the more people like the answer, the more we can see if that is the right answer. Um, so please, let's use the chat function for more interact. Uh, and I will also uh, I will also <clears throat> uh, check the chat as often as possible when we do the activities <coughs> because we need to be engaging. So, okay, so let's do 
the activities for today. Uh, I have about 30 activities that we're going to do. Let me just explain the process. Uh, we might finish early because this is content. We don't do a lot of calculations, so it might go quickly. Um, I'm going to give you a second, like a minute to think about your answers. And then we're going to discuss the answers together. So how I prefer us to do it is to answer the question step by step. We explain every line. Even though we know what the answer is, but we're going to make sure that we explain every line, whether it's correct or wrong. We're going to explain so that um, this way, one, you will be learning because you there will there might be things that I have not discussed with you, which are true, and they appear on the question because there is so much that someone can say in in two hours, um, and then there will be those that are not true but we need to say why they are not true and which way is the correct one because you need to know the correct one as well so we will discuss questions in detail we're not going to ask i'm not going to ask you to say which option and then you say option one so the options you can put on the chat on chat you can say it's option one the answer or it's option two and then when we discuss we go into details ne? I will show you the first two questions that we do and then the rest of them then you are going to do it your own like yourself so i will just be writing what you are saying um, i'm not going to be talking a lot i will come in when i need to clarify things that are not said or i need to add more to what somebody else has said ne? are we in agreement and this is where everybody unmute and say yes. So <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. I want oh, yes. To, yes. This is the kind of session yes. I want. I want people to talk to me. Yes. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Your first exercise. Complete the following sentence. Is mm, mm, is a statistical method that draws conclusions about the mm based on the mm computed from the mm. So think about it. If you are able to write on the chat, think about it. Type on the chat the answer. Uh, like say it's option A, option B, option D. You don't have to unmute as yet. Then when we come to uh, discussing this question, we're going to answer the question together. Okay, have we thought about it? So let's try and complete the sentence. Who wants to try? Uh, hi, it's Tommy here. Yes, let's complete the sentence. Uh, this descriptive statistics is a statistical method that draws conclusion about the population based on the statistics computed from the sample. Based on the statistic. Computed from the sample. On the, from the sample. Is that what you are saying? OK, yeah, anybody yes. else? Anybody else? See. So the answer, complete the sentence. Yeah. 
If you say it's C, therefore it is inferential. <coughs> Statistics is a math is a statistical method that draws conclusions about the population based on statistics statistics computed from a sample because we use inferential statistics to infer the information we collected and summarized from the sample back to the population. Whereas descriptive statistics, we describe either the population or we describe the sample. We don't draw conclusions about the population based on the sample when we use descriptive statistics. And A and B would have been incorrect so those two the answer is c okay yep another moment which of the following is not the goal of a descriptive statistic Okay, that moment is came and gone. Who can describe what descriptive statistics is? I just gave you a description of what descriptive statistics is. So what is descriptive statistic? No one. Am I alone in this room? Collecting, summarizing, and presenting what is data. Descriptive... Yes. So if descriptive statistics is about summarizing and presenting data, for all those five statements, look at them and say and let's go one by one and say why they are they are not or they are goals of statistics is a a goal of descriptive statistic yes yes that is a goal because we summarize in the data b yes yes b is also uh, a goal because it's to display the aspects of data that you have collected. C? Yes. I think. C also yes, because we're reporting on those numerical values that we have created, we have collected as well. D? No. Okay. It's incorrect. It's inferring. He says we are estimating. estimating which so is therefore, D will be the answer that we are looking for because we are looking for not the goal of a descriptive statistic. So because we are estimating, then it means it is incorrect. This is a goal of an inferential statistic. E, presentation of the data in a form of tables, charts, summary statistics is a goal of descriptive statistics. <clears throat> why am I doing all this this way? The reason why, I need to also explain why we need to do it this way. The reason why I'm doing this is so that you can understand more 
in terms of the things that we discussed on Wednesday. The other thing, since you're not writing the exam, you are still studying, you are in a studying process. When you answer questions, try and go through each and every statement and ask yourself with regards to that statement, whether is it true or false and why is it not true? Based on the knowledge that you have. And if you are unsure about that statement, put a question mark on it and then come back to it later on once you have exhausted all your options. And you can use your study guide, you can use Google, you can use anything to check that answer out. There is nothing that stops you from using any other resources because this is not an exam. You are right, you are doing your assignments, you are studying. So use as many resources that you have at your disposal. Do not rely on people giving you answers that you don't know how they got there. So try and do the answers yourself. Okay. Let's move on. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to a statistic? Take a moment to think about it. Remember those who are able to to type in the chat, you can type your answer and everybody else who is able to interact on the chat, if they agree with your answer, they can like it. If they disagree with your answer, they can type their own answer and people can agree with their own, uh, with the other answer. Let's be interactive. Okay, that one minute came and gone. Okay. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regard to a statistic? A statistic is a measure that comes from where? from the population. Anybody else? Um, from a sample. A statistic is a, pop, a, a measure that comes from a sample. Remember that. So if we know about that, so number A, and remember the measures are like your mean, your median, your standard deviation, your mode, and so forth. So number A, a sample standard deviation is a statistic. Is that correct? Correct. That is correct. A statistic is an estimate of a population parameter. That is incorrect. Okay, why are you saying it is incorrect? Let's go back here. I think the Let's go back correct. here. Here we said inferential statistics is about drawing conclusion about population based on statistics that are computed from a sample. And we said inferential statistics has two methods that we can use. We can use estimation and we can also use hypothesis testing. Remember that. That's what we discussed in the first class. 
So coming back here. Based on what I just said, B, a statistic is an estimate of a population parameter. Yes, it is. It is correct because we use the statistic to estimate what the population parameter will be. Remember with the estimation, it, we look at the confidence interval, whether it will fall in within. And with hypothesis testing, we infer the data as well by looking at when once we calculate the test statistics and we can say whether we reject or <coughs> accept the null hypothesis. And we say the information we use from the statistic, which is from the uh, sample, we can infer the results and say we are 100% sure that the population is obese. So, <coughs> This is correct. A statistic is an estimate for a population parameter because a population parameter also is like your standard deviation or your mean. So we use a statistic to estimate the population parameter. C, a statistic is a summary measure calculated from a sample. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, correct. That is correct. Number D, a population mean is a statistic. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes what? Is it correct? Yes, it's correct. Yes, it's correct. Population it mean is a statistic. No, that's it's incorrect. Correct. That is incorrect because measures that come from a population, like your population mean, your standard deviation, and so forth, we call them parameters. Um, right? yes. So a population mean is not a statistic. E, a statistic represents a property of a sample, and that is the last one we have, and that is? Looks correct. correct. So the answer that we are looking for here is number D. So when you answer the questions, please go back to the notes as well and check if your understanding is still the way you know things are. Ask yourself those questions. Ne? Okay, so we move on to the next one. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? A variable is a characteristic of an item. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping the gun. I'm giving you a minute to look at every statement. Take a minute to look at each and every statement. In the meantime, you can ignore number five if you are not sure because we never spoke about that. But if you know how to answer that, you can still use it in your answer. So we'll answer it just now. I will explain it just now. Okay, so your one minute gone. Let's go. Option one, a variable is a characteristic of an item or individual being measured. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Correct. Yes, that is correct. 
this is correct because a variable is a characteristic that define an item whether observed or measured. And in this instance, they're telling us about the measured one. Number two, a sample is a post is a portion of a population selected for an analysis. Is this correct? Yes, it's correct. It's it's correct. correct. Yes, it is correct because it is a portion or a subset. So this is correct. <clears throat> Number three, in a pie chart, the size of a segment varies according to the percentage of each category. So the pies, the size of your pies or the segments varies Sorry, according to the percentage of each category. Is that correct? It's correct. correct. Yes, that's correct. Yes, that is correct. Number four, an histogram describes better qualitative data than a bar chart. That's not correct. Not correct. Is that correct? That's correct. No. No. Okay, now, since I can hear the mumbling around, we have two charts here. A bar chart, we use bar chart to, to describe or to present it in, to present what kind of data in a bar chart. What kind of data can we use to describe? There are three charts in that. Or categorical data. We use categorical or qualitative categorical or what we call qualitative qualitative data. And remember your bar chart has bars in between. Ne? A histogram. When one finish, the other one starts. Right. So what kind of data do we use to display this histogram? Qualitative. No. We just did it now, now, no. now, oh, now. Sorry, it I was mean, the last bit no. numeric was left. It, yes. We use numerical data. Numeric, yes or quantitative data. So the statement reads as follows. A histogram describes better qualitative data than a bar chart. Is that statement correct? No. No. No, it's not correct. It is, it is not correct because histogram only describes Quantitative data. Okay, so the reason why I said we can ignore number five is because uh, remember these questions come from your past exam paper, and in the exam paper, we assume that you already have done all the sections. So wherever we we include the questions, you should have already know the knowledge about it. So we didn't discuss what a mode is. In on Wednesday, we're going to to discuss that in full detail. But a mode is the most appearing number, the most frequent number, the most highest, not, the, not in terms of, of um, quantitative data, we use only two things to describe it. To, in terms of numerical data, we say the mode is the most appearing number, the number that appears more than the other number. So when we have one, two, 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 three, four, and five. Two appears more than the other numbers. When we talk about the quantitative, uh, sorry, the qualitative data, which is the categorical data, or when we talk about the histogram, because on the histogram, we already created class intervals, which then creates categories. Then on the histogram or on a bar chart, the mode of the data is the highest bar. 
So if I look at these two charts that I have, I can see that this one is the highest and this one is the highest. So the mode of this histogram will be this graph and the mode of this bar chart will be this graph. That is only in terms of categorical information or a histogram or class with information. If we're going to talk about numerical data, which I will explain more on Wednesday, mode for numerical data is the most appearing number or the number that appears more than the other or the most frequent number, not the highest number, but the one that appears more than the others. That is the mode, but we will discuss that. Just wanted to clarify that one line. Okay, your next question is exercise five. What is a summary measure that is calculated from a sample to describe a characteristic of a population? You have one minute on this. Oh, actually, you don't even have to have one minute. We can have a half a minute because it's not a sentence that you need to read. Uh, the key word here is summary, summary measure from a sample. No, that's the key word you need to use. Okay. Okay, so let's start at the top. Since already someone is giving us an answer. What is a box plot? A box plot is a graph also on Wednesday. If we get to it uh, when we do the quantile, we will discuss what a box plot is. A box plot is a graph that displays numerical data. Ne? Okay. Data, we know what data is. Data is a value associated with a variable. Values associated with a variable. Remember that it's those values that comes from a variable. Parameter is a summary measure. A population. From population. A population. Ne? A population. All elements. Or items. of study so all individual or interest individual interest that needs to be included in your study a statistic is a summary measure that is calculated from a sample to describe a characteristic of a population and that is number five Question six, which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to qualitative and categorical data? We have a minute to think about your answer. Okay, remember the last slide uh, on the scales of measurement, the one that describes the order? This will be relevant for it. So let's start with number one. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to qualitative or categorical data? Number one, 
categorical data is measured on an ordinal or nominal scale. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. <laughs> that is correct. The frequency or the count of each element can be determined. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. It is correct because with qualitative and or categorical data, we can count the elements because once they are in the category, we can say how many they are, they fall into the category. So we can determine that. Can we find the mode? Yes. yes I just explained, but I use the bar chart. Remember, a bar chart is just a, tape, a, a graph that shows the categorical data. I use the bar chart. And I describe what the mode is not so long ago. So can we describe the mode? Can we determine the mode of a categorical data? Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes, we can, because if we look at this bar chart, this highest bar is what we call the mode. Can you calculate the mean? Question. Yes. Um, yes. So if you got like a graph that has yes. um, the same percentage, say all, all of those four categories are the same, can you say that you can determine the mode in that case? So let's say you mean like this? Yes. Yes, you can determine the mode because in this instance, there is no mode. We can still find the mode. So when we do chap when we do measures of central location, we will discuss what the mode is. They, even with numerical data, you can find the one mode, no mode, two modes, three modes, or multiple modes. You oh. can find those. So the, oh. no mode still so they all of them are the same so there is no bar that is bigger than the or that is taller than the other let's put it that way but for categorical data remember you can you can find the most so let's go back to uh, let's open again our notes And all these notes are posted. The one that we are using today in class, I just emailed it before the class. Okay. Remember when we were doing the levels of measurements? I'm just gonna go to that one slide. <clears throat> Remember this? <clears throat> For categorical data, it's nominal and ordinal. We can find the mode. For a ordinal, we can find the median, but we cannot find the mean. Remember this. Ne? Going back. Thank you. I just gave you the answer to the last one. So we know that this is correct. This is correct. This is correct. Can we find the mean? We can't find the mean of a qualitative or quantitative uh, categorical data. So the answer we are looking for, um, this question, it is too ambiguous because none of the above is also still an option. And in this instance, it's still incorrect because if you get statements like this in the exam, I feel for you, but you can apply your logic in terms of this. And ignore num number five and only 
use the other statements. So none of the above would have been, if none of them are true, then uh, this is also correct because it says none of the above. But we know that this one is incorrect. So it cannot be none of the above. So this statement, very confusing at times. So you can ignore it and only use the others. <clears throat> and you will find those kind of statements as well in your past exam papers when you do your practice exam um, exercises and, and so forth. OK, so exercise seven, which one of the following statement is incorrect? I will give you a moment here as well because it seems like it's too much. Info. Okay, so let's go through the statement. Number one, a population is a complete set of objects in the study, while a sample is a subset of a population. Is that correct? Yes, yes. correct. It's correct. It's correct. It's correct. That is correct. Number two, a statistic is a property. A statistic is a property of a population, while a parameter is a property of a sample. Is that correct? Incorrect. That is incorrect because a statistic is a property of a sample and a parameter is a property of a population of a population. Therefore, it means the rest of the other statements will be correct. Data from a sample, because we're looking for the incorrect one and we found it. So therefore, data from a sample are in a form of either a numerical categorical. We know that a variable can either be one of those. So that will be correct. Quantitative data are numeric and can either be uh, those that are numeric can either be discrete or continuous. They are discrete okay. if we count because they can be count, counted and continuous when they are measured. So, and qualitative data are categorical data and they can use labels to identify the attributes. Yeah, that that's is correct. correct. Okay. This should be easy. Which one of the following variable is not a categorical variable? Number C. Number C. Number C. The height, height yeah. of a person yeah. is it can be measured. not a categorical. It's a numerical variable. It's a numerical variable. Okay. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Lizzie? Yes. Are you saying which one is correct or incorrect? Oh, sorry. Which one is correct? 
correct. Sorry. Yeah. I've been talking about incorrect all the time, and then I'm assuming also this one says incorrect. <laughs> Which one is correct? Number one is correct. Number one is correct. Marital, gender, marital status, religion are example of qualitative ordinal variable. What are qualitative ordinal variables? These are categorical variable that can be placed in order. Is gender, marital status, and religion, can, are they ordinal? Yes, they are. Remember, ordinal means natural order or logical order. Ah. So are they? No, they're not. No. That's not correct. The amount of money a person spends in a shopping mall is a discrete variable. Money, because it's in cents, rent and cents. Anything that takes a decimal. We call it continuous. continuous. So there should have there should be nominal and this should be continuous. So this is also not correct. Number of girls Sorry, with blue eyes is it is, yes. So what is meant by the screen variable? A discrete value it's values that you can count. Number three, the number of girls with blue eyes. It's correct. No. Correct. It's a discrete variable. Now, here is another one. The number one. The position one finishes in a race is a discrete variable. Yes. Remember, position, you come first, second, third. It's ranking. So you cannot it cannot be a numerical, discrete are for numerical variables. Remember that. So this should be a categorical variable. The number of times a mouse makes a wrong turn in a laboratory. Is it continuous or is it a discrete? Discrete. It should be discrete, not continuous. So the only answer which is correct is number three. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? We can go through the statement. We don't have to think about them now. A quantitative Discrete variable results from a counting attribute. We just described this just now. Someone asked. Is that correct? We're looking for the incorrect one. Discrete variables, they come from count, counted. Are they variables that can be counted or measured? Counted. 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 So therefore this is correct. Incorrect. This is correct. correct. So we're looking for the incorrect one. 
a quantitative continuous variables that can be measured. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, that one is correct. Yeah. So this one also is correct. Number three, the mean, the median cannot be determined from a nominal scale. We just looked at this. Is that correct? Nominal scale was the first one. It's nominal, then ordinal. Yeah. What can we what what can we determine from a nominal? We can determine the frequency and we can only determine the mode. So therefore it means we cannot determine the mean and the median. So this one also is correct. Uh, correct. Or if you stay lost, we can keep that and we can go there to refresh your minds. The mean for nominal and the median, we cannot find that. Okay. The last one, an ordinal scale is a higher level of measurement than an interval scale. Incorrect. Correct. That is correct. That one is the answer we are looking for, is the incorrect answer. Number 11, consider the following variables. Now, I want you to go to the, uh, the question, which one of the following variables above are quantitative and which one are not? So let's label each one of them. Height of either a tall or short, is this a quantitative or qualitative? Because they give us the description here in terms of this height. Quantitative. 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 Uh, as either tall or, or short is Qualitative. 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 Quali qualitative. Qualitative. Okay. They don't they are not using numbers here. It's either oh. it's categories, tall or short. So it's categorical, which is quanti qualitative. Your status as either full time or part time. Qualitative. Qualitative. Is it qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative. 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 Conditions, either poor, fair, good, and excellent. Qualitative. It's qualitative. The size, rate, uh, rating of small, big, medium. Qualitative. Qualitative. It's quality. The size of screen in inches, 40 inch, 3 inch, quantitative. So the question here is which is one it? of the variables above is a quantitative variable or variables? Lizzie? Yes? Can I check something? The option A, yes. where we say your height is either tall or short, uh, yes. we, uh, it confuses me because I thought we were looking on the height where we can measure it, while you said it's mm. either tall or short. I think I got confused there. Yeah, it's the same thing with the size of a ring. They could have used inches as well and say, uh, uh, 3.5 centimeter, 4.5, 15 centimeter round circle, diameter, whatever. But they uh -huh. used, the minute they put um, categories into it, they convert that numerical value into a categorical data. I need also to explain something here. Remember, oh, let's give an answer to this question first. It's in, eh? 
Remember we said H is continuous. H on its own is continuous. But if they say H, H in yes, what it will be? It's not going to be continuous, it's going to be discrete. Also money. Money can also change from being a continuous variable to becoming a discrete, depending on the context of how the question is put. If they say money to rent, rent does not have decimals, it's one rent, two rent, three rent, you can count that. The minute you put cents to it, then it becomes measured. So you need to be very careful when you read the sentence. Don't just take the word that you see first, but also look at what other things they extend the sentence with. So you're saying um, in this case, rent is discrete and sense is continuous. Yeah, so if they say money, let's say we said the with one question, they said the amount of money you spend in in a shopping mall. They never said the amount of money in rent that you spend in a shopping in shopping mall. If they would have said that, then that question would have changed from being a continuous to being a discrete. Okay. Okay, thanks. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Let's go through each one of them. The age, if the researcher, oh, actually it should say the age of, a, of, of the researcher, age, and we just spoke about it now. Is it correct? We're looking for the incorrect one. Is age correct? Is it a quantitative continuous variable? Yes, yes it is. Oh, sorry. That is correct. The salary of the researcher? Is it quantitative continuous variable? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Gender of a researcher? Is it quant qualitative nominal? Nominal means there is no order or logical order or natural yes. order. Yes. Is that correct? That is correct. correct. Yes. The, the position of junior, mid-level, senior of a researcher? Incorrect. Ordinal. This is incorrect because it is order. Be ordinal. I'm not going to go to none of the above one as well because you remember the same thing that we discussed. And I, I expect for all the questions that are going to come now, you can just ignore the none of the above. The appropriate graphical form to summarize the categorical data. Histogram, we use what it summarizes what kind of data? Quantitative. Yes, it summarizes quantitative or numerical data. Scatter plot. These are the last charts that we did. Scatter plot, it looks at two numerical values. So this also looks at numerical values because a scatter plot, remember, is that one where I have the age here and I have income here. That is a scatter plot graph. A bar chart, if I can remind you, a bar chart looks like this. Qualitative. Yeah, scatter plot. Categorical. A frequency distribution summarizes numerical data. So the answer we are looking for is C. 
Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to the variables? Quantitative variables uses labels or names to describe attributes of elements. It's incorrect. That is incorrect. Qualitative variables have either nominal or ordinal. That is correct. That is correct. Variables can be classified as categorical or numerical. That is correct. Counting attributes of an element results in a quantitative discrete variable. Because we're counting, yes, it's discrete. Because of counting, it is discrete. Measuring, continuous. Yeah, that one is correct. Measuring oh. correct. It's correct. So the only answer we are looking for, which is incorrect, is number A. Okay. I'm not going to read the whole paragraph. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to types of variables? The name of school requiring tra learner transport. The name of school, is it nominal? Requiring learner transport is a qualitative nominal variable. Remember, nominal means order. So names of schools? I think that one is correct. That will be correct because there is no order in terms of the, the, the schools that requires transport. The distance from the learner's home to school? Is it continuous or is it discrete? Can we count or can we measure? Do we measure or do we count? Continuous. We can measure. It's continuous. We yes. measure the distance, so this is correct. It is continuous because we measure the distance. Remember, we're looking for the incorrect one. The number of learners at each school. Are we counting? Or are we measuring here? Yeah. can count the learner. So, so if we are counting, is it discrete or continuous? It's, so that it's, is it's correct it's because discrete. it's discrete. The travel time from the learner's home to school. Do we count time or do we measure time? Using a clock. We measure time. We measure time. We measure time. So if we measure incorrect. We continuous. We continuous. So this is the incorrect one. The levels of school as primary and junior and high is ordinal, which this will be correct. Okay, give it a table with a sample of 500 of people living with autism in South Africa. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? The sample refers to 500 people. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Correct, correct because it is given the... Given, yeah. We're looking for the incorrect one, eh? A population refers to everyone living in uh, living with ASD in South Africa. That's correct. Okay. Correct. This is correct because the population will be everybody that the sample is is taken from. So the sample is of 500 people living with autism disease or ASD in South Africa. So that will everybody with ASD in South Africa will be the population of interest. 
the age of a diagnosis is a variable. A variable is a characteristic that describes the population or the sample. So is age, does age describe a population or the, the, very, uh, the sample? Is age, is age a variable? Think about gender. Gender is a variable which has data, female and male. Think about age. So this is a variable and this is data. What is age? It should be a variable. Variable. Age is a variable because age, you are either 21 years of age, 18 years of age, 14. So age will be a variable and the data will be 18, 14, 21, 31, things like that. So this ones are age in months. Okay. And so it is a variable. Age is so all these values at the top here, we call them variables. All these values here inside, we call them data. So age is a variable. The mean age of a diagnosis calculated from the sample is a parameter. That's incorrect. Is that correct? No. Incorrect. That is incorrect. It must be. We it just must be statistics. Oh, okay. It should be a statistic, not a parameter. parameter. We left with almost 12 minutes. Consider the graphical methods A to D below. The question that we're going to answer is, which graphical methods are the most appropriate for a quantitative data? So let's look at each one of them before we go to the option. A bar chart, is it quantitative or qualitative data? Qualitative. It's qualitative data. A histogram? Quanti. Quantitative. Quantitative. A pie chart? Qualitative. Isn't it categories as well? Quantitative. I didn't hear that. Quali Pie chart? Qualitative. Qualitative. Because we can put it into category. Yeah. It's qualitative. A scatter plot? Qualitative. It's quantitative. Stem Sorry, Lizzie. Yes. The pie chart, can't you show percentage? There? Pie chart, you can show percentage. Yeah, but uh, a pie chart is a visualization for categorical data. We can count how many falls within, calculate the frequency, and then calculate the percentage of those. But it's a visualization for categorical data or qualitative data. Estimate leaf plot. So, if we answer the question, we need the qualitative quantitative data. So it's B, D, e, and, D. and E. Only B, D, and E. So it's option three. Mm. 
which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to tabular method of summarizing the data? So here you need to think about frequency tables. You need to think about frequency distribution tables because they're not saying which one in terms of either the categorical or oh. numerical. So they say for summarizing tabular methods, for summarizing the data. Remember, frequency table is made up of frequency distributions, relative frequency distribution, um, percentages, fre uh, percentage frequency distribution, and so forth. Mm. So, we're looking for the incorrect answer. Eh? A, a frequency distribution, relative frequency distribution, percentage frequency distribution are tabular methods suitable for summarizing both qualitative and quantitative data. That one is correct. Correct. This is correct because both of them, you can do the frequency, you can do the relative frequency and you can calculate the frequency, uh, the percentage frequency. Cumulative frequency distribution are tabular methods suitable for summarizing qualitative data. That can one we, is can we do a cumulative frequency? It's incorrect. That's incorrect. It's incorrect. It is for quantitative data. So this one would have been the one that we are looking for. To create a frequency distribution for a quantitative data, we first need to develop non-overlapping classes. Um, I just need to check. I'm going to just mute a little bit. I'm not sure which one. It's none of you that I just muted. It's FISO. Oh, I'm quiet. Yeah. It's not <laughs> you me. are quiet. It's it, not you. No. Okay, there is there is an echo. Okay, it's fine. Uh that is correct. The percentage frequency equal to the relative frequency multiplied by hundred. That is correct. Correct. Cross tabulations are suitable for summarizing the relationship between two variables, and that is correct. Right. Uh, we didn't talk about the cross tabulations. So cross tabulation, we're also going to do them in um, when we do uh, probabilities. I think in 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 in. in uh, study unit four, and we also going to talk more about them when we do the chi-square tests. Okay. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? A histogram shows data. The data set is distributed. Remember, a histogram can show the shape, right? So, wonder why must this one. So, a histogram shows the date, the distribution of the data. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Let's go back to the histogram. The next question is asking a bimodal histogram is the one with two peaks. Well, um, yes, it's correct. Okay. That is correct. If a histogram has a long tail extending to the left, it is a positively skewed. I didn't talk about positive and negative skewed. I spoke only about the right and the left. So let's assume here is zero. And let's assume here is zero. Any value this side will be? 
Negative. Negative. Any value this side will be? Positive. 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 Ne? Please. Going back to our question. If a histogram has a tail extending to the left, it is positively skewed. So let's go back to our diagram. Incorrect. Left, it is to say it is negatively. So this is incorrect. Right. When constructing an OGIF, we need to make use of the cumulative frequency, relative frequency. That is correct. Correct. Consider the following frequency distribution table with the sample of 50 grade 7 learners. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Now, we are given the cumulative frequency. What you need to do here, you can calculate your frequencies if you want, and you can calculate your percentage. frequencies because that's what they need frequency and you can also find your relative frequency and all that but if you have your frequencies you will know what what's happening there what is the relative frequency uh, sorry what is the frequency for the first one because this is a cumulative frequency therefore the frequency here will be four how do I get the frequency for the second one? I must say 17 minus 4. You need to yes. have your calculators. 18. 18. One, three. What is the free what is the frequency for the next one? 42 minus 17. So you need to subtract the one above, the one above. 25 all the time 25 48 minus 42 6 6 6 50 minus 48 2 2 if you add all of them they should give you 50 né? because the the last cumulative frequency here is 50 so it must also be 50 so what will be the relative frequency let's start with the relative frequency yeah let's do that let's say we're going to split this into two this one will be relative frequency is 4 divided by 50 i'm going to say 4 divided by 50 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 8. Uh, it's two o'clock. Yeah, four divided by fifty is 0, 0, We're gonna finish just now. Zero comma zero, 0, 8. 0, 8. Yeah. Thirteen divided by fifty. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do all of them. But thirteen divided by fifty. Zero point two six. Two six. I didn't hear that. 0 0.26. 0 0.26. 0 0.26. 0 0.26. 0 I'm just going to do only those ones. So let's look at the, the questions. We will add others as we go along. But you get the, you get the understanding behind everything that I wanted to do here. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what is the frequency of classes between 6 and 8, 6 to, to 8? So you go to 6 to 8, you look for the frequency. Okay, what is four. the frequency? It's 4. It's four. 4, so therefore this is correct. The relative frequency of 9 to 11, you come to the relative frequency column and you go to 9 to 11, 
which is 9 to 11, the relative frequency is? 0 0.26. 0 0.26. That is correct. The percentage frequency of class 12 to 14, so you need to go to 12 to 14, which is 25. You need to go and say 25. Uh, zero divide comma by five. 50 multiply yeah. that no remember we're looking for the percentage, percentage frequency so you will need to go and create the percentage frequency you need to take 0, 0,5 and multiply that with 100 it's and 100. that will give you 50, 50. and that 50, will be yeah. 50 which is correct the midpoint of class 15 to 17, remember we're looking for the midpoint. The midpoint is you add the two, the lower limit and the upper limit and divide by two. It will give you the midpoint. So for 15 to 17, you say 15 plus 17. And you divide that by two and it will give you 16. Correct. So that is correct. The width the width of 18 to 20, you take 20, you subtract 18, and it will give you the width. Four. And the width is? Four. Two. Two. So it's 20 minus 18, which is equals to two. So this is the incorrect one. And that's how you will do your frequency distribution tables and test. Um, anyway, Apart from all these things that I have, there are so many other questions, but you will see that they almost look exactly the same. So I had, I was hoping that we will get to this one where we can complete this question and then answer the questions. So we don't have to do that. You can do it on your own and we can discuss it on WhatsApp. Don't worry about it. We have the WhatsApp group to discuss all the other questions like question number 22, yeah, not 22, from 21 until question 30, so there is 23. They almost look almost exactly the same as what we have been doing. I just remove the options and then make it like question-like um, so that you can think more and not choose the options as you see them. Then there is also question 24 that you can go through, question 25, 26, 27, and 28 and and with that so all those eight questions that are left we can discuss them on whatsapp or we can discuss them on on my unisa before we before you go i just wanted to show you on my unisa